Hey everybody, welcome back to another full self-driving video. My name is John and I document the progress of Tesla's autonomous driving technology here in the Northwest suburbs of Chicago. I had the unique pleasure to test side-by-side -side version 13 and comparing that to version 12 down in the city. You can check out that link above. Today's video is about an edge case. This is a situation where you have a green light and then you have a stop sign right next to the green light. As a human driver, you drive straight through that intersection and ignore the stop sign. However, what does FSD do? And here it's slowing down. Nobody behind us, stuff's flying forward. Look at this, okay, it's stopping at a green light. I tested this 16 times with the stop sign fully open, with the stop sign partially open, and with the stop sign fully closed, and I got a whole bunch of different results. I made a big table and a nice conclusion. You can jump to the end if you wanna cut to the chase, but I think you'll find this video highly entertaining and very interesting because a lot of these situations surprised me. Now, just because I don't have version 13 doesn't mean that's a reason to click away from this video because for daily driving on the streets, for changing lanes, for going through intersections, all of this behavior is very, very similar to version 13. Is it as smooth? No, but version 13 can't do a lot of things, same as version 12. People are giving version 13 a lot of credit and I don't blame them, it's doing some amazing things. My only point is that version 12 also does amazing things and I know a lot of my viewers are still on version 12 and I wanna just really emphasize the fact that we need to be very happy with what we have. It's operating so, so well. And I can't wait to get version 12.6. It should be any day now. As of January 14th, 6.45 p.m., it has not arrived on any Model 3 vehicles. And I have been checking obsessively. Every 30 minutes, I'm scrolling to see if I have an update. The fact that we don't have an update gives me the unique pleasure to edit and publish videos like this. So for that, I'm very thankful. But as soon as I get it, I will be filming. So make sure you turn on your notifications and follow me also on X at John BBC to see the latest and greatest for Hardware 3. Thanks so much for watching, guys. If you are interested again to see the, the conclusion, you can jump ahead. There's chapters down below. And I have to mention real quick a shout out to Texas Tesla for this shirt, FSD Supervised. It's an awesome a supervisor. I am a supervisor. and. That comes into play a lot throughout these tests, as you'll see. <laughs> um, but definitely check out his merch store down below in the description. Hey guys, we have an edge case here that we're testing with a stop sign that folds up. So we can fold it in one thirds. So we're gonna see if full self-driving ignores it or responds to it. Okay, here's this stop sign. As you can see, it folds open and it's already come undone. So it's halfway closed right now so I should be able to here close it let's see ah oh, yeah and it actually stays I don't need any tape or anything so I'm gonna leave it open like this and we're gonna drive by as it is and it should not stop and that'll be our first test and then the second test will be closing it halfway and seeing if it responds that way also down here check this out we have this speed limit sign which is obviously not oriented the right way and I can move it, but I don't know if FSD is going to respond to that or if it's gonna display it on the screen because it is upside down. That is certainly an edge case. Now that's less of a concern than a stop sign that is half open, but <laughs> we're gonna see if it actually displays it on the screen. Well, here we go, guys, let's see what happens. Stop sign is right there and it automatically changed lanes to get into the middle lane and here it's slowing down. Nobody behind us, stuff's flying forward. Look at this, okay, it's stopping at a green light. Not what we want it to do. Nobody behind us, no cars anywhere, but we've got a green light here. That stop sign is not showing up in the screen and then finally it decided to go. Now here's that 45 mile per hour sign and it did not display it at all, but it stopped there. That was not the right thing to do, so I'm gonna report that. And I, you know whether it responded to that stop sign or not, I don't know. We're gonna find out now by closing the stop sign all the way and then see if it does the same thing, stopping there. 
And then after that, and I'm surprised by the way that that stop sign didn't show up at all. And then I'm gonna put it halfway closed and see if it does anything there. And there's the red arrow going left slowing down it slowed down a little bit but it went through it went through just fine interesting let's there's someone right behind us that might have had something to do with it let's test that one more time perfect it's getting in the middle lane we're gonna have an identical don't go again okay perfect this is identical to previously here we are green light nobody behind us it slowed down a little bit but it did not stop so now it makes me want to test with that stop sign again. I'm going to do a third test with the stop sign fully closed just to make sure that it's not stopping at that intersection anymore. Okay, here we come up to the closed stop sign. We have a green light. We're going straight forward. The traffic in front of us just moved through the intersection and smoothly going through here slowing down Ooh, look at that slow down 34. It's, it's really tough really really tough and there it didn't show the 45 speed limit sign but that is not a good sign that it slowed down that means i need to test it one last time with the stop sign closed just to confirm that we're not having a false slowdown it, it could definitely be related to that this is going to take, take a lot more time to test than I had originally planned, but it's worth it here for science. It's good for me to understand what it's responding to or what it's not responding to, at least. Okay, here we go for the last test. This time the car should pick the middle lane, so it will be a duplicate from that time when we had the stop sign fully open. Let's hope the timing is good with the signal. Okay, perfect. It looks clear. Okay, it's going to get over into the middle. This is exactly what we had before where it stopped. Nobody behind us, same as before. And let's see what happens. Not slowing down at all. Okay. I think, generally speaking, it's not slowing down. It did slow down a little bit, but generally speaking, it's not stopping. I think that's it's safe to say that with that stop sign closed all the way, it is not stopping at that intersection anymore. So let's go ahead and open it back up again and see what we find out. Stop sign is fully open. Someone is behind us, a little bit different from last time, but the stop sign is fully open. And, ooh, possibly responding to the yellow light. Really hard to say. Makes my day a lot longer. I gotta circle around and film this again. We're gonna test this a couple times. Okay, here we go again. Somebody's behind us. And the stop sign did get displayed. You saw the stop sign. And it was braking for it, but didn't completely stop. Interesting. Let's do this again. Let's try to get it back into the middle lane to get that repeated scenario. Now, we did have someone right behind us, so it's possible that it continued to go because it saw them. Really hard to say. And it's extremely difficult to duplicate a traffic pattern. Nobody behind us. And the light is remaining green. Let's see what happens here. There's the stop sign. It got displayed. Completely ignored it. It slowed down just a tiny bit, but that was not due to the stop sign. Coming up here, it actually showed the stop sign as a human for, for some reason. There's the stop sign. It got displayed, completely ignored it, and went straight through. And 45 mile per hour speed limit not being displayed. So great, it ignored it then. Let's do it a couple more times. Okay, here we go, a repeat of the first time when we had it stop. We are in the middle lane, proceeding forward. We're going about four minute, four miles per hour over the speed limit. I don't see, the, oh, there it slowed down. Did you see that? Okay, it's slowing down 28, ah, uh, it's 50-50. I don't know, it didn't display the stop sign, but it slowed down to 28 miles an hour there. And that, again, could be due to just the traffic light and some unknown I don't know necessarily that it's related to that stop sign now that we had that happen <laughs> we're gonna have to test it again here okay it is enabled here we go through this intersection the last time with the stop sign fully extended
it slowed down, but then it sped up. It's kind of like half stopping, half not stopping. <laughs> okay, so ah, uh, it it is stopping more than it stopped when it was fully closed. So I think it's safe to say it is responding to that stop sign, but not completely. So the question is now if we and I just I don't have all day to test this here, but <laughs> if I close now one panel, what is going to happen? That's the, the real question here that we're trying to figure out how it responds to that situation. OK, it did not display and it went through just fine. Somebody is behind us. They're not really close to us, so I don't think it had anything to do with that, but it definitely did not respond to that and behaved as I would have expected it to just kind of ignore that. Any human would ignore that. Okay, nobody behind us, far right lane. 47, 46, slow down a tiny bit, 45. Ooh, I can feel it breaking. Okay, look at this. It's stopping at a green light and it's not displaying the stop sign. And now it's proceeding to go and report that. Okay, here we are in the middle lane, speeding up to get to the speed limit. There is somebody behind us, but the, there's quite a bit of distance. And here's where it would stop if it was, and it did not stop. I don't think this hesitation or the stopping has to do with which lane I'm in in particular, but it is interesting to note that that stop sign is not being displayed whatsoever. Looks like we've got a green light. Turning it on. Ah, someone's coming up behind us. Hopefully they don't get too close to us here. Let's see what happens here. Hesitating a little bit. Now we do have that car as a reference in the other lane. I'm going to aim for this one more time just so that there's absolutely no cars. I should have waited just a little bit more. It had a reference there. I'm, I, now my, my last and final hypothesis is that it's responding to the other cars in the other lanes and leveraging that as part of its confidence level. I could be wrong, but let's, let's try to put that to rest by having no cars around while I do this test. Okay, this is perfect. There's nobody around and it lets me turn it on here. We're in the middle lane no reference whatsoever for surrounding vehicles nobody behind us Let's see what happens okay it went through no problem so let me know in the comments what you guys think how it's responding to this situation in conclusion fsd does the right thing when the stop sign is fully closed and when the stop sign is half open however there were a couple situations where it didn't do the right thing and it's hard to know whether this is related to the slowdowns at green lights or whether this was related to the stop sign itself however when it comes to the stop sign being fully open i had slightly different results on test number two the traffic light turned from yellow to red so i'm discounting that one entirely but out of the other six tests four of them were failures in other words it slowed down unnecessarily or stopped and that accounts for 67 percent failure rate so it really did not act appropriately. You can study this chart to see if you identify any patterns because every single time I drove through here, it was a little bit different depending on the cars around me. In other words, the cars that were visible in front of me, kind of leading the way, giving it some context. Also, I tracked cars being behind me. Was anybody pushing me or anyone coming up behind me that would maybe influence the car's decisions or its behavior. And the other things that I tracked was, was I in the middle lane or was I in the right lane? For example, I thought if I was in the far right lane, it would be a lot easier to identify and react to the stop sign. However, I really couldn't come to any firm conclusions on that. But it's good to know that generally speaking, it does the right thing. It's just concerning with the fully open situation that it's hit or miss. And that was the scenario I tested the most. 
And I'm very curious to hear what you think of these results, if you agree with them, and if you've come across similar situations in your area, I would love to hear. Thanks for watching.